Hey everybody, this is Nathan Lehman at the Ultra Running Company here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we really appreciate you joining us for a shoe review. So let's jump right in. Today we're going to be covering the Hoka One One Challenger 6. This is really an iterative update of Hoka's kind of mainline trail running shoe. This is a type of shoe that they uh, really allows people to go from road to trail, go back and forth a little bit, and we're going to talk about why in this video. So let's jump right in. First of all, the way we look at shoes at Ultra Running Company, this is what we call a low drop comfort cushioned trail running shoe. What does that mean? Well, let's dive right in. Let's first look at the low drop. Drop is sometimes referred to as heel toe offset. And what it is, is it's the difference between the amount of cushion under your heel and the amount of cushion right here, kind of under your instep. And uh, some shoes will have a very high angle here and some shoes will be a little bit flatter, more natural like, like your feet are. Hoka tends to strike a really nice balance on that uh, with all of their shoes being somewhere between about four and six millimeters of drop. So four to six millimeters of extra cushion under the heel. Uh, in the case of the Challenger, Hoka advertises this as having 24 millimeters of cushion in the front and 29 millimeters in the back, so about five millimeters of drop. In our measurements, uh, it's actually a little bit more than that, about a, about a six millimeter drop, which really takes kind of calibrated feet to feel, and it still falls in that same low drop category for us. Um, we measured this shoe being at about uh, 25 and a half millimeters on the forefoot, and about 31 and a half on the heel. So uh, just a little bit more. But the big thing there is that at 31 millimeters, we measure this shoe without the insole in it. Insoles out about another four millimeters and different companies will measure it with and without the insole. For consistency's sake, we're always measuring without the insole. So when we put in an insole, you've got another four millimeters of cushion. And what that means is this is a really cushioned shoe at this point. Um, 35, 36 millimeters between your foot and the ground, uh, gives this a really, really plush ride. So what you're gonna feel uh, is, is a really soft, almost pillowy kind of, okay, I'm gonna say a cloudy feel in this Challenger. It's really gonna give a lot when you hit the ground. So if you do land on your heel, it'll give there. If you land on your midfoot or forefoot, it's gonna give there. Throughout, this is the same type of cushion throughout, kind of the traditional Hoka soft uh, uh, soft cushioning. So uh, this is what you think of when you think of a Hoka trail running shoe. As you move to the uh, to the actual tread on the shoe, really no changes at all here from the uh, Challenger 5. Hoka would claim that they've optimized the tread design and that sort of thing, but um, generally speaking, these are cosmetic changes. It's still got three or four millimeters of, of tread lug here. Smaller lugs um, on, the, on the heel, a little bit larger on the front. What you wanna get is kind of a, a, a full surface, a lot of surface contact. That allows this shoe to be run on the road and then lugs which allow it to be run on really what I'd say is groomed trail right up through kind of rocky and rooty stuff but not the really what we call technical kind of super sharp rocks that sort of thing. This soft rubber that I mentioned on the on the midsole here wraps right around and everything you see here is really really cosmetic. This is going to burn off if you're on really tough aggregate rocks um, you know stuff that, that digs in. This portion is going to burn off and this rubber is not Hoka's most uh, durable rubber. It's, it's a really good mix. It's gonna be great for trails if you run in California um, on, on kind of the groomed trails out there, if you run on greenways, if you run on, on uh, really any what, what we call light trail or even more aggressive trail, mountain bike routes, that sort of thing. This is gonna be a great shoe for you. In all but the most sloppy mud, it's gonna give you good traction and it's gonna protect you a bit. Uh, as I said, when you get into those sharp rocks, we don't, it, that will dig into these orange portions of the shoe. 
and that's gonna that's gonna wear away so if you want to have the really aggressive when i say that i'm, I'm talking new england pennsylvania type th rocks uh, i'm talking uh, upper mountains in colorado that sort of thing you're going to want to go with a more aggressive shoe for about 90 percent of us this is a fantastic road to trail shoe that's going to give you use on both now keep in mind if you run on the road with this um, these these lugs are going to move around a little bit they are going to wear off a bit and if you run on really aggressive trail they're going to wear too so the sweet spot is kind of in the middle run out your door run a mile or two if you need to to get to a trail uh, on that trail have a great time pine needles dirt light rocks roots and uh, and go from there it's going to hold up well so we typically expect to get kind of normal mileage with this shoe it does have a lot of cushion so you're not going to get that really technical kind of toe off on the rocks um, or on the trail you're going to get a smooth ride that just makes uh, your whole day feel really comfortable uh, this shoe is good for everything from a 5k because it's very light and we'll talk about that in a second uh, all the way up to 100 miles if, if you so uh, felt like running that far in, in the shoe it'll hold up to all of that so um, really wide use case on this as you move up to the upper on this shoe that's actually a pretty big change from the last version uh, Hoke has gone with a much finer knit on their upper uh, it's it's uh, it's kind of a mesh on it it's two layers so if you look really closely on this uh, what you're gonna see is you've got kind of an upper layer with little holes in it and a second layer I mean that just means it's gonna be durable for you so uh, if you do scratch it with rocks it's it's um, gonna hold up relatively well the, uh, the other piece of it is that it's got these plastic overlays on the toe where you really need it the most. And uh, that is down a little bit on previous versions that cut in a bit more. We found that our toes over long extended periods of time would hit that top part, be a little less comfortable. It looks like Hoka's kind of listened to their customers, expanded it out, but still kept that edging on it so that if you kick rocks, kick roots, that sort of thing, um, it's still gonna hold up really well. So good all, uh, good all around on the upper. Um, it's comfortable, it'll wrap around your foot. Uh, they've changed the lacing pattern a little bit, putting in these, these extra little eyelets here. Um, let me be the first to tell you, these are entirely cosmetic. There is no benefit that we can find of having kind of an inset one. It seems to be the thing to do now on shoes. But this is actually, uh, it's actually just kind of um, sewn into the piece. So when you pull on this, you're just pulling on it like you would any other one. Looks cool. Um, doesn't have a whole lot of uh, benefit there. What does have a benefit is you've got this uh, this piece holding the laces to the uh, tongue. So the tongue's not going to move over. That tongue is a nice padded tongue. Generally speaking, this is kind of in the sweet spot with, with Hoka as far as feel that we get feedback at the store. It's not so thick that it's a really pillowy thing, but it's not so thin that it scratches at your foot. So good, um, good all around feel for this, having a little bit of cushion there as you tighten it up. That goes right around uh, into the heel cup. And in the heel cup, it's sturdy, but still a little bit flexible. I'd say that this is pretty firm back here. You're gonna want that on a trail shoe, just uh, trying to get that control. Again, on a trail, on really on a trail shoe, you wanna be snug here, snug here, and kind of wide open for your toes. And so the nice piece that the Challenger's always had is a wide area there. So um, all around, Good iterative changes on the upper. No real obvious back sliding here. This is a very comfortable shoe as uh, as it pulls on. Hoka's got a little thing here where you can pull this on. And again, lots of different ways to go about that. Um, if you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't. So um, good, good all around there. This shoe weighs in. Um, according to Hoka, this is an 8.1 ounce shoe for a women's uh, survey size. Uh, and for a men's, it's a 9.8 ounce shoe, keeping it under that 10 ounces that they're really looking for. Now keep in mind that that 9.8 ounces is for a men's size nine. If you've got big old boats like I do, size 13, you're looking at over 12 ounces for this shoe. That's still light-ish for a 12 ounce, for a uh, size 13, but it's not super light. So it's also definitely not even close to the heaviest. We weighed some Stinsons last year, the Stinson 5s that weighed in at almost a pound a piece, so 16 ounces. So this is considerably lower than that. So you're getting a lightweight shoe that's comfortable and uh, and can go a long ways in it. So One big thing about the Challenger is that it does come in wide widths. I talked about this generous toe box. If you get the wide in this shoe, it's gonna be about another two millimeters wider all around so that means the heel is going to be a little wider the forefoot is going to be a little wider you're going to want to make sure you actually do have a wide foot to wear it this is not like an ultra where uh, or a topo where it's going to snugly fit your heel if you go with something a little wider up top um, a wide and a hoka is a true wide and a great benefit for folks that have 
wider feet from toe to heel. One thing about that is Hoka actually lists the shoe as being the same weight between the wide and the standard with two more millimeters of, of width. That didn't make sense to us. So when we weighed it, uh, size 13 is actually 12.5 ounces. So, so about a quarter ounce more for the wide than, that is, than uh, for the standard width. That's really not noticeable if you're out running and that quarter ounce is not gonna make you slower on the trails. That quarter ounce is not gonna affect your run. So really do, uh, if you have the opportunity at the store that you're shopping with, uh, definitely try the wide, try the standard and make sure both the heel and the toe box fit you really well. Uh, if you find a good fit in this shoe, which we think you will, you'll really enjoy it for a number of miles and uh, you'll have a really great time. The Hoka Oneoni Challenger 6 retails for $130, so really the sweet spot of, of running shoes right now. Uh, you'll certainly find some less expensive. My gut tells me they probably won't last that long. Uh, you'll find some much more expensive. And again, a gut feeling there is uh, if you're paying a whole lot more for a lightweight, mixed use, uh, light trail shoe, uh, you're probably right on the edge of paying too much for it. So that 130 to 150 is a really sweet spot for, uh, for great trail shoes. And, uh, and we think this, uh, this Challenger falls in that spot. So give it a shot. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please check out our uh, feed on this and give us a yell uh, in the comments. We'll try and get back to you and, uh, and we'll try and answer all the questions. Please check out our other videos as well. We answer a lot of the questions that people leave in those. And uh, sometimes we don't have a, uh, an opportunity to get back to all of the comments uh, that we find. So if you do check out some other ones, if you have, a, for example, a, uh, uh, you want to know whether you should use this or a more challenging, uh, a more aggressive uh, Hoka, um, do check out the reviews for the other ones as well. And we'll try and be as, as uh, concise and specific as possible. So thanks again. As always, learn to love to run. Thanks for sticking with us. And we look forward to talking with you soon.